Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit Worship Online, and thank you for continuing to invite us into your home each week. In this ser if this service is helpful to you, I'd like to invite you to please spread the good news with others by simply clicking the like or the share button on your YouTube or Facebook feed. If you're in the Denver metro area, please know that you are always welcome to experience Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit in person. Our Sunday morning services are currently at 8.30 and 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And if you are a member of Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit and watching online, our annual meeting is coming up on Sunday, January 30th at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. We will provide a link to participate via Zoom if you can't be here in person for that annual meeting. Thank you also for your ongoing support of this ministry. Our QR codes are online at holyspiritco.org, and there is also a form on our website for ongoing donations. Thank you for considering your gift to this ministry. Now I'd like to invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible sign of the Holy Spirit's presence in your home, in our midst, and in the world in which we are called to serve. Blessed be the Holy One, God of all, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you and our beloved and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your people when they did not act as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. Rejoice in this good word, good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are beloved children of God, adopted into the household of Christ. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace, my gracious Master. And my God, I'll six feet to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of your name. The name of Jesus charms our fears and bids our sorrow cease, sings music in the sinner's ears, brings life and health. Listens to his voice, new life and dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice, the humble poor believe. Look unto him, your Savior, O oh, fallen human race. Look and be saved through faith alone, be he just and You formed a people in mercy and freedom. Pour out your spirit on us today so we may bear the good news of your ancient promises to all who seek you. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. 
For it is the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Declare the glory of God. And the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language. And their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out in all the land and their message to the ends of the world. Where God has pitched a tent for the sun. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your soul. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, our gospel today comes from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The knee bones connected to the thigh bone Thigh bones connected to the hip bone. The hip bones connected to the, goes on and on. Anybody ever heard that song? 
It's a playful song that kind of gets us to today's punchline. And in many versions, it's clearly connected to the African American spiritual based on a book, based on the book of Ezekiel, Dem Bones. That's another gem altogether. Dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. And some of our camp folks might be tempted to end this whole thing with, and they will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Do you hear this playful transition to what the Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth? The body is one and has many members, feet and eyes and ears and hands. Paul instructs us about anatomy. The members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, like toes. If you've ever broken a toe or even just stubbed a toe, a fairly common experience it is, you'll know how smashing one of these tiny appendages can be felt throughout the entire body and it can alter our view of the world instantly. Paul, knowing this, writes, if one member of the body suffers, all suffer together with it. Remember that smashed toe. Paul's writing to a badly divided and confused group of folks in Corinth. This is the local church of Paul's ministry, and that congregation was disturbed by doubts and suspicion. Relationships were confused, and feelings had been hurt. There were struggles for power and competing factions. And all of this was in a richly gifted community that proclaimed Jesus as their Lord. Read a bit more in these letters of the Corinthian church and you get the idea that several toes were smashed along with maybe a broken arm, a couple of ribs sore and bruised, and maybe even a kidney punched just for good measure. And one of the points that Paul makes about Christian responsibility is that this kind of hurtful contention gives the church universal a black eye. Indeed, Paul says, the body doesn't consist of one member, but of many. If one member suffers, all suffer with it. The most obvious Christian community is this gathered congregation, both online and in person. All of us here together are there any struggles for power? Are there action and angers that hurt rather than heal? Are there members like Paul refers to that are weaker, less honorable, who are strengthened and given a place of honor in this community? What about the smashed toes? Are they bound up with healing salve? And is there an arm that's offered to help the body stand? Our lessons today are about healing, about getting along, about common good. In modern speak, we might say that Paul was urging the Corinthians to remember that we're all in this together. Or put another way, we need each other. But this connectedness, this relatedness is something that we've struggled with since the beginning. There's the image of the beginning in scripture where we start out fine, man and woman, humanity and animals, the created order and God. We lived in harmony, we ate grass instead of each other and God's voice was heard as friendly. But that early Eden of cooperative dependence, of joyful relationship, broken and even on a good day, it's a struggle to imagine what it must have been like so close to each other and so close to God. We're in this church season of Epiphany, a time when we hear stories about the manifestations and the miracles of God. Epiphany means a showering of God, a showing of God among us in human flesh. A showing of God among us in human flesh. This is what the wise men found when they followed the star to the baby Jesus. And what Paul recognizes in teaching the Corinthians about oneness in body. It's all about experiencing God among us. It's about finding God here, now. 
It's about recognizing that God isn't out there somewhere far away, untouchable. God is here, present with us. We meet God in the human person of Jesus and in each other. One explanation of epiphany is the appearance on the surface of something from the depths. This is Emmanuel, God with us, as the prophets of old proclaimed. Our Advent prayer, O come, O come, Emmanuel, it was answered at Christmas. And yet each day we seem to need reminding, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Now, I'll admit some of the language of our worship suggests that God is indeed far, far away and really unavailable or untouchable for us. There is, at times, a real sense that God is out there and uninvolved, not among us in our midst at all. But what was the message of Christmas that we celebrated and were meant to learn? That Emmanuel, our prayer that God would come among us, this prayer has been answered. Jesus stood up in the synagogue to read from the prophet Isaiah, and then he sat down to teach the people, saying, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The people marveled at him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. Perhaps they marveled because they heard differently a passage from Isaiah proclaiming release to the captives, sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed, and the Lord God's favor to the least of these, the weaker members, the inferior ones. We can be pretty sure that they didn't completely understand the full implication for them of the world where everyone is welcome at God's table with equal place, and that God is there at the table and in their midst and in their defense. Do we fully get it 2,000 years later? Paul taught about the body of Christ, that we need each other for wholeness and health in the body. And Jesus spoke of this reconciling of hurts and differences and inequities in the larger family of God. Right now, we're living in a world that's off balance. Violence of all kinds is so normal that it doesn't even capture our, capture our attention on the evening news. Our elected officials seem often to be at cross purposes with those that, are, that they are elected to serve. And, Relationships are stressed and broken. Marriages, siblings, friends cut off, shut down, lonely, broken. What happened? How do we find our way back into a sense of community, of shared purpose, of, of goals and striving for the good of the whole? Paul's teaching that every member of the body is crucial, whether the body is a marriage, a family, a congregation, a neighborhood, a city, a country, or the world, this teaching that every member of the body is crucial, it's a critical teaching. And it's true for every person. And because it's so linked to the bedrock of our faith, this one, this one named Jesus, it's especially true for us who are followers of Jesus. We are all members of one body through baptism, through that water, linked together inextricably, whether we like it or not. Jesus brought us freedom and vision and salvation and said that he brought it for all, for everyone, for the big players and the inferior parts. This isn't optional. Now one truth that biologists learned a long time ago through observation, biologists learned that systems have a much greater survival rate when complexity is allowed to thrive. Organisms rely on one another for food and all manner of sustenance. Protection, protections are in proper balance. 
birth and death rates, they find their correct proportions for the good of the larger system. Harmony reigns. So when it comes to viruses, complexity thriving is not a good thing. But when it comes to a resurgence of the gray wolf population in Yellowstone, there is this complex web where all the other parts of the ecosystem, from native grasses to the small mammals to elk, they're coming back into this sustainable balance. And even the streams, streams of living water are flowing again in ways that they, did, that they hadn't for over a century. Jesus teaches that the larger family of God shares the responsibility of care for one another. And Epiphany, this season of Epiphany, it reminds us of Emmanuel, God with us. But it takes the Apostle Paul to remind us in this morning's lesson, or this, in this lesson read today, that not one of us is ever alone. We have each other, and we have God, and we are encouraged to live in balance and complexity and in harmony. And in that, we can find both tremendous comfort as well as great responsibility for action. Thanks be to God. among us, where we are divided in our society, nation, or communities, come quickly to reunite us. Ease tensions and conflict. Help us to find creative ways to deal with our disagreements and our conflicts. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Anoint us with your Spirit's abundance. 
grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability and those living with pain or those living under oppression. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this community. Encourage a variety of ministries that seek to serve our neighbors. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person that we meet. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Today we pray for Nettie, Jan, Kelly, Chris, Rick, and all we name now with our lips or in our hearts. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift all our prayers to you in confidence and in faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May God, who created you for love, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, may this God bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.